This is David Bedichoso, I'm a senior high school teacher of Kabarugis National School of Arts and Trades, Kabarugis Quirino. This live stream is intended for my students under 21st century literature from the Philippines and of the world. Before I formally start my class for this afternoon, I would like first to recognize our school principal, Dr. Jimmy Aurelaria, our assistant school principal, Ma'am Vilma Carlos. Good afternoon, ma'am, and good afternoon, sir. I would like also to take this opportunity to shout out all of my students from the different sections that I am handling. I have students from grade 11, Amber, Amethyst, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, Onyx, Emerald, Aquamarine. Good afternoon to everyone. For this afternoon, we are going to focus our lecture on how we, we are going to write close analysis as part of the performance task or competencies required for Module 1, Lesson 2 of 21st Century Literature from the Philippines and of the World. I'm very much excited to share to you the ways on how we write close analysis. At the same time, I am going to introduce to you the literary piece that I have written, which was approved by the LRMDS of SDO Quirino. I would like also to take this opportunity to thank the SDO Quirino for approving this literary piece to be used in this subject matter. Thank you very much, Dr. Filimendo Felipe, Sir Ron, Sir Ron Bergado, our Assistant School Division Superintendent, Dr. Cheryl Ramiro, and of course, our Superintendent, Dr. Flor Delisa Jacobe. Maraming salamat po for your approval. So before we move on with our real deal this afternoon, let's have, let's have a recap. Let's have a recap of what transpired last time with your lesson one, with the video that I was able to send to you from the DepEd Central Office with the topic on the dimensions of Philippine literature. There are, there are different branches or stages of the Philippine literature that we need to study. And you have learned last time about the first one we have the pre-colonial period. It is the time before the Spaniards came in our country. And we have learned that in this dimension of the Philippine literature, the focus of the literature, it's oral literature. When we say oral literature, these stories were transpired or transferred to the next generation verbally. And the focus of these literatures are stories involving mythical creatures, stories about legends, myths, epics, they also have riddles before. And these stories or these literatures that were used by our ancestors in the pre-colonial period were used to, 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 to groom their children or to, to discipline their children. Example, at night during their pillow talks with their families before, parents would talk about their the stories of Capre, Aswang, Chanak, or Tik Tik, telling their kids that these creatures would come out at night. Well, definitely, if the kid would hear about this, the kid wouldn't want to go out at night. It's because there is a danger out there. Well, these were the stories that they had before. Another thing we have riddles or bugtong. Riddles or bugtong before were used to challenge the intellect of, the, of their companions. If they could answer these things, it only means that they are smart enough to be analytical in answering the riddle given. Good afternoon, class. How are you doing? Are you still there? Okay, I, as of now, I have, I have like... Okay, let me check. A 
OK? I was saying that riddles are used to challenge or it's a form of entertainment when they have their talks with their friends before. They would exchange riddles and exchange ideas about these things. We have also epics. Epics, these are stories that, that involve characters with extraordinary strength like Lamang, the very famous epic of Ilocos, Biag ni Lamang. And then we also have legends. Legends, these are stories that tell or that speaks about that speaks about the origin of things. Example of which we have the, the legend of Pinya, ang alamat ng Pinya. We also have the legend of Susong Dalaga. Have you heard about the legend of Susong Dalaga before, class? The legend of Susong Dalaga, well, basically, for those who do not know it yet, Susong Dalaga is one of the tourist attractions of our province. It is found in the municipality of Kabarugis. And the legend of Susong Dalaga, it was stated to me by my elementary teacher before. She told me that the legend of Susong Dalaga happened when a very particular or very beautiful young woman named Dalaga was abducted, abducted and was raped by bandits. They took her breast and when a fairy godmother saw it, she punished these bandits and she transformed these bandits to black stones. And in memory of Dalaga, the, the fairy made two mountains in a form of a breast. That's why it's called Susong Dalaga. Okay, so these are examples of legends. We also have myths, just like the stories of, of, of the stories. When we talk about myths, these are stories that involve gods or goddesses, fairies, deities in the environment. So that is for pre-colonial period. Let's move on with the colonial period or the Spanish era during the time of the Spaniards. How it transformed, how it transformed the literary works of our fellow Filipinos from pre-colonial to colonial period. The Spaniards, the main reason that they came in our country is for them to find for spices at the same time to spread Christianity. And one of the greatest contributions they have is the Spanish language. They taught the Filipinos before Spanish language. They taught us religion, Christianity. And with the experiences of our ancestors before for, for about 333 years under the under the time of the Spaniards, Filipinos learned to write poems and stories, example and even novels, example of which we have the El Filibusterismo, the Noli Mitangere of our national hero, Dr. Jose Perizal, and many more. So this is just a review of, class of what was stated in the video that you have watched last week. Then we move on with the American period. After the Spanish period, we also have the American period wherein we also learned this English language. And in here, they introduced topics such as love. If in the time of Spaniards, most of the topics were about religion, about how they faced the, the hardships under the colon under the Spanish regime, in the American period, they introduced us about romance, about love. It is also the Americans that brought to us education, formal education. We had this, it, it is when, the, it is during the American period wherein the University of the Philippines was established and even the Philippine Normal College. Filipinos, Learn to write novels in English and even they learned how to write essays in English. And one of the most famous writers during that time is Jose Garcia Villa. And he said, arts for art's sake. 
And one of the most known literary works of Jose Garcia Villa is the Emperor's Sonnet. Emperor's Sonnet is a blank poem. It's only the title that you can read. It's like the Emperor's Sonnet, and that's it. Well, have you heard about the story of the Emperor's New Clothes? Well, let me try to restate the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. It's all about the Emperor wanting to have a, the best dress or the best attire in their kingdom, and he asked all craftsmen to make, to make the best dress for him. And here comes one mischievous one who is very wise and he told the emperor to to make or to give him like threads out of gold diamonds crystals and pearls so that he could make the 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 best clothes for the emperor however the emperor doesn't know that it was a thief in short he took all the threads and what happened? He presented something like Mr. or Emperor, here is your clothes. But in the, the real thing is that he's holding nothing. He said that the craftsman said to the Emperor that only wise men could see the clothes that he made. So the emperor pretended that he can see the outfit that was made for him because he doesn't want to admit that he is not a wise man. So all of the people in the kingdom, they are not that honest themselves that they cannot see really the attire that was made for the emperor. So they pretended that they can see it. In short, they were full by this craft, craftsman. They were fooled by the craftsman. Craftsman. Until a young boy told the king that he was nude all the time. And that's the inspiration of the emperor's sonnet. It's up to the readers to understand or interpret the meaning of the poem written by Jose Garcia Villa. It's your personal, it's a subjective understanding on how you are going to emperor to interpret the poem, The Emperor's Sonnet. Another poem written by Jose Garcia Villa that's very interesting is entitled The Bashful Ones. I repeat, The Bashful Ones. The content of this poem is like, it's just a comma. Just a comma and that's all. It's a poem and it's very known, The Bashful Ones. If you try to do an analysis about the bashful ones, bashful means you are shy, you don't have that confidence. And the content of this poem is just a piece or a single comma. And when we use comma in sentences, it means that we pause. It means that we need to stop for a moment and then we continue. The bashful ones. People who are timid, people who are sometimes shy, tend to pause for a moment to think of the next activities or movement that they are going to do, even in making decisions. The Bashful Ones by Jose Garcia Villa. Okay, so I think we're done with the recap of what you learned from Lesson 1 of Module 1. Now let's move on with Lesson 2. Guys, I can still read your comments using the messenger. If you have questions, you just you can write your comments or questions in the messenger and it would pop up in my phone right now, okay? Okay, I hope you're still with me. Now, let's focus on the real deal this afternoon. How are we going to write a close analysis or literary interpretation of a text? For the information of everyone, writing a close analysis is part of your performance task for this subject. It means that it's a competency that all of the students should learn. Okay, and to start with, let me first show you an image. Okay. There is a bottle with a pen placed on top of it. 
Let's try to analyze what is the connection of the bottle and the pen. Kindly message me now or in our GC, kindly write your comment. What is the relationship of these two objects? Let me show it again. What's the relationship of these two objects? A bottle of water and a pen on top of it. Can you guess what is the meaning of it? Or what can we get from that symbolism that I just showed you? Maybe you would say like, Sir, balance. Okay, I like this answer from Ms. Maranya. Ms. Maranya, sir, it's balance. Correct. Without, without the proper position of the pen on top of that bottled water, it might fall. There is balance in here. That is correct. Do you have another idea, class? We're doing close analysis right now. We are going beyond of what we see. We are trying to go deeper with the things that we see. What do you think can we get from this image? A bottled water with a pen on top of it. Can you give me? What do you think is the connection of these two objects? Do you have more? Okay. Aside from balance, which was given by Miss Maranya, the connection of this one for me is that without the use of the pen, from the persons or individuals who have crafted the design or who have innovated the use of bottles, who have conducted, maybe they have written prototypes, they have written researches, they have written studies on how to develop this. There is a transformation from how they, how, waters were stored before maybe they used maybe they used bao as a form of container for waters before maybe bamboo but because of the pen or pencil that was used by the researcher or the person who crafted or designed bottles then we have this bottles are you with me okay it's a jump start of what is about to happen on how we analyze literary texts. Okay. Today, I would like to introduce you a word. It is the word allegory. Can you say it? Allegory. 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 It's an expression by means of symbolic function or fictional figures and actions of truths or generalizations about human existence. It could be a story, a poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. In short, when we say allegory, these are ideas, these are things that give us, or these are images, these are objects that would give us another meaning or deeper meanings about it. Allegorical lines. Allegorical lines are lines written in poems or stories which we could understand when we go deeper with it. When we try to put it in the context on how it was written, the structure on how the author would arrange the thought of, of, of it. It's when we write close analysis. Okay, what is a close analysis or how do we write a close analysis, Sir Dave? Okay, class, now I want to bring out your notebooks or a piece of paper for you to write salient points on how to write a close analysis. The first characteristic of a close analysis of literary text is, number one, it's a subjective interpretation. It's a subjective interpretation. When we say it's a subjective interpretation, it means that it is the it is your opinion 
on how are you going to explain your own understanding. It's a personal thing. Your understanding of the words or phrases written in a particular story or poem is different from the understanding of the person seated beside you or the person or your classmates. It's because, basically, you are not the same. You have different experiences. You have different levels of vocabulary. At the same time, you have different perspective on how you see things. A glass of water can be seen as half full or half empty. First characteristic of a close analysis, it's a subjective interpretation. The second one is a close analysis is a written work. When we say written work, of course, you need to write. There has to be an introduction. You are going to introduce the topic. There has to be a body, and at the same time, there has to be a conclusion. There should be an organization of thoughts of your work. Number three, a close analysis should be supported with facts or researches. Okay? A close analysis should be supported with facts and researches. Why? Of course, with your subjective interpretation, there has to be a basis to why you said such thing means like this. You have to cite references for, for your close analysis of the literary text to be concrete, to be based on facts. Are you still with me? Okay, next. A close analysis should explain the concepts behind why the, why the author wrote a particular literary work. It has to be comprehensive. It has to be analytical. Are you still with me? So those are the four for characteristics of a close analysis in writing a close analysis number one it should be a, it's a written work number two it is subjective number three it is supported with facts or researches number three it should explain the concepts how it was written what's the purpose of this literary work what's the context when this literary work was written there are many ways on how we write a close analysis. Number one, we have the top-down approach. Top-down approach. It means that prior to understanding the content of the text, the reader must have his prior schema or stock knowledge about the text. Okay, top-down approach. The second one, we have the bottom-up approach. When we say bottom-up approach, the focus of the reader is understanding the text itself before he compares the idea to what he already know. That is bottom-up approach. Text first before you grasp the learning. Unlike top-down, knowledge first, your stock knowledge about that, and you try to compare it. That's how you do the top-down and the bottom-up approach. Next, we have sociological approach. When we say sociological approach, it is when the writer of the close analysis would try to study the context, the environment, the society, when the author wrote the literary work. What particular evidences in the environment or in the community pushed him or her, or what inspired him or her to write this text? Just like Dr. Jose Perizal, the environment before, when he wrote 
no limitang here and el filibusterismo maybe when you are going to write a close analysis about that using the sociological approach you will use the facts that happened that in that context in that time in that place or environment when the author wrote that literary work sociological approach next we also have feminist approach when we say feminist approach it is how women would look at or how women would per, per how women would interpret the literary text that's feminist approach how women would look at that poem how how women would interpret that poem that is feminist approach okay so those are some of the approaches that i know on how we write close analysis let's summarize a close analysis is a written work which is subjective in content that explains the concept and theme of a literary work furthermore the analysis must be supported with facts from researches i repeat close analysis is a written work which is subjective in content that explains the concepts and theme of a literary work furthermore the analysis must be supported with facts from researches now these are the steps on how we write close analysis number one first you need to read the text not once twice thrice or more would be better read the literary work but when you read read beyond the lines you have to look for hidden meanings in it and that drives me to the next step what's the next step after you read identify the topic what is all about the short story what is all about the poem Oh, the, the poem is all about the environment. The poem is all about love. Next, after you identify the topic or theme of the poem, what is the format of the literary text? Is it a free verse poem? Is it a short story? Is it a novel? Do we have a particular number of syllables per line in that poem? Do we have meter? Is there a particular format in the sounds of the end in the last words of each line of the poem? How many quatrants do we have? How many stanzas do we have? Identify the topic and the format. Number three, this one identify the allegorical statements or lines in the literary text going back to what we said earlier allegories these are statements that has that have meanings deeper meanings after we identify these lines what we are going to do is to analyze the meaning of it analyze the meaning of it how do we analyze? Try to, try to put yourself into the shoe of the speaker of the poem. What do you think is the reason why the author would say this thing? What's the hidden meaning of it? Next, after you analyze these lines, you have to research for facts to support your analysis of that poem. According to, based on a research conducted by, he said that Ludongs are considered as president's fish. It's because it's expensive. The line of the poem said that with Ludongs that try to have territories conquered. 
Ludong there doesn't literally mean the fish. Rather, it points out to politicians. Because, based on the earlier statement that I said, it's considered as the president's fish. Are you still with me? Next, connect your analysis with your personal experience. It co that makes your close analysis subjective. When you try to put yourself into it, when you try to feel the emotions of it, comparing it to your personal experiences, to your stories. And then, with those notes, I firmly believe you can write already your close analysis. Now, let's talk about the literary piece that you are going to analyze. The poem, Now You Hear Me. Okay, are you still with me? Now You Hear Me is a free verse poem that contains allegorical lines that form imagery on global environmental problems that we face today. The poem presents cause and effect relationship of abusiveness of humans to our environment. The contextualized symbolisms found in the poem are Bugalots, Ludong, Sierra Madre, Cagayan River, and Quirino. The material presents hand-painted visuals that explain the content of each paragraph. By the way, class, I would like to acknowledge the visual artist of the poem that I wrote. We have Mr. Mark Angelo Navarro Olonan of Saguday. He's a former student of mine, and he is an architecture student of St. Mary's University. Thank you very much, Mark Angelo. If you're watching this, Miko, shout out to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, let's start. Let's start, let, let us try, okay, let me try to give you an overview on how to do an analysis of the poem that you are about to analyze, okay? Are you still with me? If yes, you're still with me, kindly message our group chat so that I can read your comments if you're still with me. Kindly write your names in the group chat for me to check if you are still watching this Lecture right now. Can you write it on the chat box? Jenilyn Verno. Hello, Miss Jenilyn. Who else is watching? Shout out. <laughs> I'm just opening the PDF of the poem class as we. I sent it to you already, correct? Now you hear me by yours truly. Okay. Now you hear me. Here we go. Okay. Joyce Pascual, hello. Shout out, Miss Joyce Pascual. Jeb Bertis, Balandang. Hi. Shout out, Jeb. Joyce, hello. Okay. If you can, read... Let's read it together. Ready? I hope you're ho holding your copy. About a hundred years ago, nature was stainless and preserved in the province of Quirino. People harmoniously and peacefully relished its beauty. The Bukalut's days were satiate, undeniably. Along the mighty shoulders of Sierra Madre, the dawn broke magnificently. The land was picturesque. A site to feast. The lucid waters of the great land encompassing Cagayan River have Ludongs that tried to have territories conquered. Trees grew tall to salute the sky. With leaves that shimmered, they were never dry. Flocks of birds soared way up high, sang their songs with freedom implied. Came one night when darkness prevailed, chills ran wild, it was terror unveiled. The blood caught a demonic disease, a devouring practice of abusiveness and greed. Evil came and brought distress, rivers clogged 
with anything useless. The mountains were painted black with burning brushes, the fields dug up for a rock that flashes. The peace then vanished, gone and lost, minds all governed with selfish thoughts. Lives went shorter, feuds went longer, till a voice came roaring like a battling thunder. The air you breathed, I gave to you. The creatures you killed, I gave to you. The trees you cut, I gave to you. The forest you burned, I gave to you. All you enjoy but destroyed, I gave to you. Use humans. Everything that you have, I gave them all. But what have I done that you betrayed and pushed me to fall? You're a user, a corrupt, a murderer. You're a disgrace and a destroyer. No, 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 no. We have done no wrong. I use all things you gave to be strong. I sheltered and fed and clothed you whole, but you ruined and wrecked and trashed my beloved abode. You must be punished and be expelled. Be one with the ground like the fruits you wasted. I am guilty of all your claims. I put you, my creator, in all kinds of shame. You gifted a mother to nurture my being, but I was ungrateful of her rearing. With a bolo, I stabbed her. I wounded her shoulder that carried me and killed her. I am a murderer, for I killed my innocent mother. She gave me the gift of life, and life I took from her. She cried for help. But I just watched her suffer. I can still hear her. Can you? So that's the poem. Now you hear me by your sturdy. At the last part of this poem, of this material that I sent to you, there are comprehension questions which you can use in writing your close analysis. Are you still with me? Okay, let's try to answer. As we go through it, kindly write your answers in our group chat so that it would pop up to me right now. Number one, what is the meaning of the title of the poem, Now You Hear Me? You can start by saying, the meaning of the title of the poem, Now You Hear Me, is a call. Maybe a call. Yes, Kim. Recognize, Carlo. A call for an action to be done by the people, right? Something like that. Number two, who is the speaker of the poem? The speaker of the poem is not the author, okay? The speaker of the poem is the persona which states the message of the story. There are actually two speakers of the poem. Number one, we have humans, and at the same time, the earth. Correct? Number three, how did the speaker describe the nature in the past century? How did I describe it? Well, if you try to look at the first three Quatron, or first three stanzas of the poem. I describe it like an environment that is flourishing with fauna, <laughs> with natural resources, and the like. And then, after that, you can cite references to describe the environment in the past. Are you still with me? Number four, what lines of the poem present the environmental problems that we f the world face today? What lines of the poem? What particular excerpts? Class, when we talk about excerpts, these are lines that are part of a poem or a story. That's what we call as an excerpt. So what excerpts of the poem would tell about environmental problems? I'll give you one. Fields dug up for a rock that flashes. Fields, 
particular area. It was dug up for a rock that flashes. A rock that flashes, it symbolizes, it symbolizes something that is precious, something like that is shining, shimmering, like gold. In what aspect of the world we have these things? Or we have seen these problems, gold mining and the like, were in Brazil, in Egypt, in South Africa, in the Philippines, in Quirino, up to you to present it. The mountains were painted black with burning brushes. What does it mean? The mountains were painted black with burning brushes. It talks about deforestation, wildfires that, that happen not only in the Philippines but also abroad. Well, the Amazon forest is in danger because of wildfire, right? Not only there, even in Quirino, there are some individuals who do uma. They term, is, they term it as uma. They burn or they transform forest areas to farmlands, especially the mountainous parts of our country. And that makes me sad. Why? It's because a tree would take about 10 to 15 years to grow. But then it only takes for about 3 minutes for it to be burned. Why? It's because people nowadays would want to earn money for, have, for them to have something to eat. There are ways on how we can provide for ourselves. But then, sometimes we choose the wrong paths. Okay. What is the author's style in writing the poem? What is my style when I wrote this poem? Was it in free verse? Is, does, do I follow particular format in writing? Is there a particular number of syllables to be used per stanza? Or I don't have. I don't know. You check it out. What do you think is the purpose of the author in writing this poem? Okay. What's my purpose? It's up to you. What do you think is my purpose when I wrote this poem? Number seven. What, as a student and a member of the community, how will you protect the environment? Okay. For items 8, 9, 10, write a critical interpretation of the following excerpts. Number one, you, number eight, you must be punished and be expelled. Be one with the ground like the fruits you wasted. What's the emotion in this line? Who said this line? Why would that person or why would that speaker say this heavy line? to this particular receiver of the message. Why? Oh, it's very nice to expound this one. Number, eight, number nine. What about this one? You gifted a mother to nurture my being, but I was ungrateful of her rearing. What does it mean? You gifted a mother to nurture my being, but I was ungrateful of her rearing. Ah, oh, you have to look for... If there are words that you are not familiar with, try to browse the dictionary. Try to look at it, the lexical meaning of it, and then try to put it in the context. What does it mean? Does it literally mean like this or a different one? Number 10, I can still hear her. Can you? What's the meaning of this? Hear is far different from listen. Correct? I can hear the sound of the waves of the ocean, but I cannot understand what does it tell me. Why is the title of this poem is Now You Hear Me and Now You Listen to Me? Well, I'm just trying to provoke your mind to expound the thoughts behind this poem. 
Okay, I think we're all good with that. I hope that I was able to share to you the things that you need to remember in writing your close analysis. Once again, good afternoon and good day. Kindly comment down. I would like to check the attendance of those students who are here. Kindly write down your, kindly message the GC so that I can read your names. As of the moment, I have 21 students watching me. Share this video to your classmates so that they will be able to watch it later. Kindly, come, kindly write your names in our group chat so that I can recognize you. Come on, guys. First, we have Diane Joy Caralibranza, Joyce Pascual, Abigail Abluyen Hangdaan. Hello. We also have JB Maranya. Hi, JB. Okay, we also have. We also have. Do we have more? Fedeline, Miss Fedeline. Hi, Fedeline. Hi, Jeb. Bertis Balandang of Amitis. Hi, shout out, Jeb. Uh, Shout out to KJ Saga, KJ Chami. Hi, shout out to Chami Alison from Kim. Hi to KJ Saga. Hi to Carlo Manzano, Marlo Manzano. Hi, Avery Ann. How are you, Avery Ann? Hi, Ashley, Ashley Ramones. Hi, Jamaica. Shout out to Miss Jamaica, future Miss Aglipay. Who else do we have here? Okay. Oops. Who else do we have here? Hi, Miss Maria Cristina Singson. Hi, Miss Hannah May Olonan. Hi, Miss Liza Dane Palaya Pagbilaw. Miss Abigail. Okay. Who else do we have here? Do we have Kim? Kim, are you there? Okay, class, I think we're done. I hope that you are now ready to write your close analysis of the poem, Now You Hear Me. I'm very much excited to read what, what you have in mind with this poem. I want to learn something from you. Okay, shout out to Jamaica Balauro from Jeb Bertis Balanda. Okay, shout out to Miss Diane. Lebranza, future Miss Saguday. Okay. <laughs> okay, class. Before I finally end this one, hi, Miss Dulnuan Jovi Pandao. Before I formally end this video about our topic, now you hear me and how to write close analysis, I would like to leave a very important message. We only have one planet. Okay, names are coming in. Nea, hi. We only have one planet. We need to do something to protect it. I want my future children to see the beauty of our planet. I want them to experience what it's like to be in Satan River. I want them to experience what it's like to enjoy the forest of Nagtipunan. I want them to experience the beauty of Aglipay Cave. I want them to experience the beauty of the sunset every afternoon without pollution. Do, do we share the same dreams for the future of your children? If yes, then we need to act to the call of our Mother Earth. We have to conserve energy. We have to dispose our waste properly. We have to be responsible enough with our waste. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. Kindly like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, David Dichoso. Okay? Bye, guys. Shout out to all of you. I love you all. Bye.